very glad to be here today and have the opportunity to speak with you. Um, we're going to start off with a, uh, a quick review, just so everybody's on the same page about the Chima program. So uh, a, a Chima is a grouping of commercial citrus groves that are in close proximity to each other, and uh, these groves work collectively to control the Asian citrus psyllids. That's what it is. There are 49 different Chimas throughout the state. That ranges from as far north as uh, Volusia in Marion County, as far south as uh, Hendry in Collier County. Within the boundaries of the Chima program, uh, there's just a little over 486,000 acres of commercial citrus. That's not all of the uh, commercial citrus in the state. I believe that number is uh, somewhere around 524,000 acres. <clears throat> so we, we have the majority of the, uh, the commercial acreage in, in, in the boundaries of Chima. Uh, one of the, the, the key components uh, of the Chima program is the joint scouting effort going on through uh, USDA and FDACs. <clears throat> uh, the, the scouting has been going on since uh, August of 2011, and uh, when the scouts come to your grove, they'll call you, let you know they're coming, and when they enter the grove, they're going to be sampling 50 trees total in, in the block. Uh, the, the process of the sampling is they will sample 10 trees on each corner of the grove, so northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest, for a total of 40 trees, and then they're going to sample 10 trees within the uh, center of the grove for a total of 50. Uh, they're going to sample the same trees every single time they enter the grove. Uh, the sampling technique that is being utilized is tap sampling. Uh, so they put a, a sheet of paper under the uh, tree branch, bang it a few times with a stick, and any pests, especially psyllids that are there, are going to fall on that sheet, and they get a count for each of the tap samples. Uh, at the end of the, uh, the 50 tap samples, they total up how many psyllids were found, and then that uh, number is reported back to uh, DPI in Gainesville, at which point it becomes available on the, uh, the achievement website. <clears throat> As of right now, we're scouting around uh, 5,500 blocks throughout the state. We do have a little room to add some more, uh, some more scouting. Uh, location. So if you have something you want to get scouted, perhaps we can uh, make that work out for you. Get a hold with either uh, me or Greg Carlton, Tim Riley, and we can uh, work with you. Okay, so uh, what we're shooting for in the in the Chima uh, program is coordinated control of the Asian citrus psyllid. So that's that's area-wide pest management. Where uh, prior to HLB and green and all stuff, we, we kind of uh, we're on a farm-based approach or an individual approach, and we're, we're moving away from that idea now with, uh, with the area-wide management strategy uh, to more of a, a co cooperative community-based approach uh, towards psyllid management. And where you see the, the area-wide approaches being utilized is when you have a pest that's you know, highly, mo uh, highly mobile, kind of like a psyllid is. So that's why we uh, have employed this strategy uh, against uh, the psyllid. And the psyllid behavior, you know, lends itself to being highly mobile. You know, you can have uh, your, your neighbor's grove a couple miles down the road with psyllids in it, and by the end of the day, your neighbor's psyllids could become your psyllids. They're, you know, they can cover that kind of distance. <clears throat> uh, so the characteristics of a coordinated spray. Uh, there are two main things that we look for when we uh, put these together. That's the timing, and that's the mode of action. And we'll get into this a little bit more. Uh, so your normal CHEMA activities, uh, most of the CHEMAs that we have out there that are doing very well, uh, keeping psyllid populations very low, are aiming to, for four to five coordinated sprays per year. Uh, and when we start out with the, the planning process of the, the coordinated spray program, we usually start in the dormant period uh, with the, the first two dormant sprays. The first one normally taking place in the November to December time frame, uh, second dormant spray coming in somewhere around in January. Uh, following that, uh, the petal fall spray, which a lot of people are in right now, very critical spray. Uh, the psyllids that have somehow managed to survive the winter and the two dormant sprays, they, they've made it all that time to make it to spring flush, and they're looking for that nice, young, tender, feathering flush. They're going to lay their eggs on it, and it doesn't take but just a few psyllids to cause a big spike in population. So this spray is, is vitally important. Uh, then if you're going for, if you're going for the, the four sprays per year plan, the next one on the list would be the fall spray, some t taking place somewhere in uh, September, October, something like that. And then uh, if you're going for the five sprays a year, there would be an additional spray uh, during the summer, usually uh, falling in between the, uh, the two oil sprays. Uh, <clears throat> so back to the mode of action issue, what's in the tank? Uh, when we're lining these, these sprays out, we're trying to keep it simple. Um, all we're looking for here is agreement on what mode of action an insecticide is going to be used. That's it. Uh, so we, we selected the pyrethroid or organophosphate. Let's go with uh, the example we choose an organophosphate. Well, 
there are a couple different options there of insecticides in that, in that mode of action. You can choose whichever one you like. It doesn't matter to me as long as we stay within that, that mode of action. And then what else you add to the tank, that's your own business. Uh, we're not in the business of talking about nutritionals or, or miticides or fungicides, that kind of stuff. We're just trying to get agreement on the mode of action of the insecticide. <clears throat> uh, and so putting all this together and, and getting success, there, there's four key ingredients to, to, to getting success. And the first three uh, that you find in all the chemas that, that are, are active and successful, the first is leadership. Uh, and, and these chemas that are doing very well, you see at least there's one or two people that have stepped up and provided some, some uh, leadership to the, to the operation, not necessarily making all the decisions about what's going on in the chema, but they're helping to facilitate the activity of the chema. They are, you know, lining up aerial application or applicators as needed, uh, bringing together growers for meeting, that kind of stuff, just helping it come along and, and helping it develop. Uh, the next is, is uh, grower participation. And as I said earlier, we're doing area-wide pest management. In order to be successful at that, you've got to have the grower participation. We can have great leadership and a great spray program, but if no one participates in it, we're not going to have any success. Uh, next is uh, commu communication, these areas that are doing really well. Uh, you, you see there's a constant stream of communication coming in and out from the, the, the growers uh, in those areas. Uh, the, the, they'll, they'll talk about you know, the current production practices, what they're seeing as far as pest population, pest pressure, the next uh, coming coordinated spray, that kind of stuff. It, it, it's just keeping everybody on the same page as to what, what's uh, you know, coming up on the horizon for coordinated control. Uh, so getting all this stuff implemented and getting it to work, uh, each chima operates on its own, so what, what might work in Orange and Lake County might not be the best plan for, you know, for a chima down south. So we need to tailor the activities of each chima to, you know, to, to what's going on in that area. Um, and so the spray program is, is determined by the growers of the chima, so it needs to be a collective effort on, on what, what's going to be done. Um, <clears throat> The coordinated sprays are, are designed to be uh, inexpensive, uh, inclusive, and simple. So simple, we're trying to keep it down to just the mode of action and the right timing. Inexpensive, most of these, uh, most of these Chima sprays, you'll, you'll find some kind of aerial component to it, and those, those aerial sprays can be fairly cheap uh, in, in the right circumstances and inclusive. Of course, everybody wants, you know, we want everybody to, to be involved in the process and, and you know, definitely participate. Uh, and the fourth key to go along with the three I mentioned earlier is getting getting the acreage sprayed or getting as much acreage sp acreage sp sprayed as possible. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, getting uh, spraying as much acreage as possible as quickly as possible. So there, there's been discussions about you know uh, coverage, you know, gallons per acre and stuff like that. You can spray it however you like. If you like an airplane or a helicopter or a ground rig, that's fine. But we got to get through it as quick as we can and get as much of it uh, covered as we can. <clears throat> so let's get into some of the results now. Uh, this, this graph right here, all the graphs you're going to see going forward are going to depict the average number of psyllids per block, and in this case we're looking at the state, the rest of them will be uh, on a per chima basis. So the average number of psyllids per block for the entire state. Uh, and the blue line is showing uh, 2012, red is 2013, and uh, in 2013 we did pretty good over the whole course of the year. We were a little bit higher than we were in uh, 2012 during the bloom period uh, in here. Uh, and then we come to uh, 2014, we're about the same level we were in January of this year as we have been for the past two. February, we've never been that low uh, on a statewide basis, so we're doing better there. And then March, we're kind of at the same place we were uh, in 2012, but lower than uh, we were in 2013. Hopefully that line will, uh, will taper off as we go into April uh, with all the petal fall sprays that are going on. <clears throat> so. Let's look at an individual chima now. So the Berea South Frostproof Chima uh, is really one of our, our shining stars. This, this graph again is showing the average number of psyllids per block for the entire chima. And the red line is 2012, black line 2013. So we've got 24 months of, of data here. And over the course of those 24 months, there's only three occasions, uh, and they were all in 2012, where this chima produced an average psyllid population of one psyllid or more per block. All the other 23 remaining months out of, out of that two years, uh, or 21 remaining months out of, the, out of those two years, this chima maintained an average of less than one psyllid per block for the entire chima. That's, that's pretty phenomenal psyllid control. They are utilizing uh, five coordinated sprays per year. <clears throat> and if we look at the, uh, the, the green line for 2014, 
they, in January this year, they're lower than they ever have been. Same situation for, for February and March, that's the lowest population they've had ever. So th this team is really doing a, a really good job. Uh, let's look at some of the maps here. <clears throat> so this is a map from the team of sexual mapping program. The white line that you see going around all these squares, that is the team of boundary. The squares that you see inside of the, uh, the boundary, those are individual TRSs or township range and section. Each of those squares is roughly one square mile or 640 acres. Uh, the, let's go over the, the legend real quick. So if there's no coloration such as right here, that means there was zero seal is found in that TRS. Uh, the, the green indicates an average of less than one seal per block for the TRS. Blue is an average of one to five seal per block for the TRS. And then yellow is an average of six to 10. Red is an average of 10 or more. So when we look at the map, we definitely want to avoid the yellow and red, red colorations. So there's only one here, and this is back from uh, February and March of 2012. We're going to look at a, a year by year uh, case here. And at the very top of the map, we have the average seals per section uh, for the entire Chima. So we're at 0 0.41 for uh, February and March of 2012. Go forward one year. We're about the same level on the, the average, but again, we don't see any yellow or red on the map. That's good. And then we, we fast forward again one more time to uh, uh, March of this year, and we're at an average of 0 .0, 0, uh, 0 0.07. So almost zero sillas were found in the entire Chima uh, March of this year. So that, that's what we want the map to look like. Uh, <clears throat> most of the TRSs are showing no coloration, meaning zero sillas. So that's what we're shooting for when we look at these maps. Um, Next up, the Fort Meade out tourist Chima. Uh, this is a, a good success story on, on what coordinated uh, control can do. Uh, the, the red line showing 2012 and the black line showing 2013. For 2012, there was not a whole lot of coordinated control going on there. Then we got to uh, about September of 2012, and at this time, there was a reorganization of the Chima activities in this area, and they coordinated a fall spray with about 5,000 acres participating. And they dropped the population pretty, uh, you know, a, a pretty significant amount. And then in November, they did their first dormant spray, uh, and there was about 7,500 acres or so participating in that, and they significantly dropped the silid population. And then in 2013, they hit their second, or uh, January 2013, they hit their second dormant spray with about 10 to 12,000 acres participating and they have maintained that, that level of participation throughout 2013, and we can see the clear difference between the two years as far as the population goes. Um, <clears throat> coming in for 2014, they're doing better in January, February, and March of 2014 than they have done in all previous years according to the scouting. So they're, they're maintaining their, 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 their good silly control. Here, we'll look at the same uh, uh, series of maps again, this time for Fort Meade, and we see the squares again, a lot of yellow, a lot of red on the map. This is for, again, February and March of 2012, a lot of color on there. Our average is uh, 6.05. Let's fast forward one year to March of uh, 2013. We've gotten rid of some of the yellow and red on the map, but there's still you know, some decent you know, silly population, some higher counts coming out of there. Our average is at 3.36. And then we move forward to uh, March of this year, and we see that we've gotten rid of most of the coloration on the map totally. We've still got a few spots in yellow that are showing up, but our average has dropped to 0 0.88. So over the course of th uh, three years now, the silica population has significantly declined uh, through that time period. Uh, next up, northeast DeSoto. This is, this is down towards Arcadia, another uh, good functioning Chima. It's one of our larger Chimas, over 30,000 acres of commercial citrus in here. And with that size of, a, you know, a, a, uh, of an operation, you're going to have a, a couple of occasional spikes. But for the most part, they do a good job on, on their coordinated control. They, they've got good participation. Uh, every now and then, you know, they'll have somebody who doesn't go and you kind of leave an island, who, somebody who doesn't participate in the, in the spray, and you'll leave an island of silids out there just to, to reinfest a tree to blocks. But if we look, for, look at 2014, uh, they're doing doing very well uh, compared to uh, the same numbers uh, or the same time last year. So they're starting off on the right foot for 2014. Same thing with maps. Uh, uh, in February, March of 2012, an average of 0.46. A little bit of a little bit of yellow on about not too bad. Then in 2013, they have a few a few hot spots in there. So last year's bloom was a little little uh, different, you know. So we can attribute that to uh, the, the bloom. 
uh, the average there was 2.08. And then we go to uh, this year, March of 2014, and the majority of all this big, huge planting of the citrus is showing either zero psyllids or an average of less than one psyllid per block for the entire team. So that's, that's what we're looking for, our average back down to uh, uh, less than one. So a good, a good demonstration of coordinated control there. So South Lake West Orange. For a long time when I had these in a presentation, it was kind of to show uh, uh, what to avoid. But here recently we've had some, some big changes go on in this team for the better. Uh, they've had some spikes throughout the throughout time and this is 2012 that's a spike to an average of uh, over 40 psyllids per block for the entire chima so some high psyllid populations same thing happens in 2013 they ended up 2013 uh, with an average of just over 35 psyllids per block for the entire chima uh, there's been some reorganization in this chima and in january we conducted our first true coordinated spray uh, and as a result, uh, here in January is when it happened, and then resulting in that f in February, we've dropped the psyllid population to the, the lowest it's been ever. So it's never reached that level of uh, control, and that, that population maintained itself into March. So hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll get the same thing in April. <clears throat> Just to, to show you what it used to look like, remember I said you, you, you want to avoid the yellow and the red on the map? Well, the whole thing was red. Uh, we had an average of 27.2 psyllids per block uh, on an average for, for TRS. And so this was again for, for uh, uh, 2013, February and March of 2013. And we'll fast forward to uh, January of this year. This is the, what the map looked like while the spray was going on in cycle 44. And in cycle 45, I'm sorry, let me back up one. So we see our average was 24.08 in cycle 44. In cycle 45, following the spray and after all the scouting results came in, it's dropped to 6.7. So one coordinated spray significantly reduced the psyllid population uh, in this Chima. And this is what, you know, an aerial map showing the groves that did participate in the Chima. Uh, in yellow are groves that were sprayed by air with a helicopter at two gallons to the acre. Red indicates groves that were uh, uh, sprayed by ground, so whether it was a speed sprayer or UOV machine. Uh, All together, we had about 1,300 acres participate with the helicopter spray and another 3,000 acres participating with the ground rig spray. So about 4,200 acres participating, and you know what a result. And we've got another spray coming up here soon. Uh, <clears throat> so if you are in the Orange Lake Marion County area, this is what you've got coming up. Uh, the next spray for the South Lake West Orange Chima and the Green Swamp Chima will be April 28th to May 5th. And if you're in the Central Lake North Orange Chima and the North Lake South Marion Chima, uh, the next spray will be May 5th and May 20 or May 12th. In both situations, the mode of action will be an organophosphate. Again, it doesn't matter which of the organophosphates you choose as long as you stick with that mode of action and there will be a helicopter available again. So if you're in that area, I can't encourage you enough to, to you know, get with me or, or uh, Gary England, who's the multi-county agent for this area, and we can get you set up with, with uh, the plans for, for what we're going to do. Uh, another team that has just recently uh, reorganized, got themselves together, is the Northwest Hardy Chima. Uh, their first coordinated spray, their first true coordinated spray, actually took place uh, starting yesterday. I don't know how much got done with, with weather and, and going into today, but there is going to be an aerial option available for this, uh, for this application. The mode of action will be a pyrethroid, and it's not too late to participate. If you have groves in that area, you know, I, I, please get a hold of, of, of Mr. Keith Farr or uh, Dr. Steve Futch, who's the multi-county agent for that, for that area, and we can get you in, in touch with the right people to get, to get on board. <clears throat> uh, so we've seen some, uh, we've seen plenty of examples of where a coordinated spray is being utilized, but the, how does that compare to areas where, you know, the, the growers are still utilizing a kind of an individual or farm, a single farm-based approach? <clears throat> what, what we're looking at here is, again, I'm using Berea, South Frost Roof Chima, as an example in blue, and the, the other line in red is Bear's Den. The reason I compare these two Chimas is because they're pretty much the same. Uh, they have the same leadership in place. They uh, utilize the same spray program, the same pilots, the same planes, uh, insecticides. It's all the same stuff. The, the only difference is the amount of grower participation in the coordinated sprays. So as I've already alluded to, Berea has a very high amount of grower participation, where in Barristan it's not so much. And the, the top graph is showing 2012. So this is January 2012, following all the scouting cycles until the end of 2012. And aside from one spike right here, Berea maintains a fairly low psyllid average 
uh, on fair little silid average on silas per block for the entire Chima as compared to Bear's Den. And it's even more pronounced in 2013 uh, where, as I've kind of already said, Berea maintains an average of less than one silage for the course of a year. So that's very impressive. Whereas in Bear's Den, we have a spike coming out of, uh, out of dormancy that ends them up at about an average of nine silids per block for the entire Chima. And that pattern re re repeats itself this year uh, 2014's data picks up about right here, and this is going into March of uh, this year, and Berea somehow managed to decline their silic population during that time, where bears didn't spike up to about an average of eight silics per block. So the difference between coordinated control and an individual's, uh, individual approach. <clears throat> uh, so a quick re uh, update on our resources. So the Chima website, flchima.org, that's the place you want to go for all your uh, uh, information about Chima's, there's a, a wealth of information there. Can't encourage you to go to it enough. Um, the, the sectional mapping program, if you signed up for that prior to uh, uh, I don't know, January of this year, you had to submit a username and a password and that kind of stuff. Uh, well, I've heard back from you guys. Apparently, we didn't want to do that, so we've cut that requirement out. So you no, no longer have to enter a username and password. It just where it used to say log in, now it says enter. You click on that, and you're right into the mapping program. You will still uh, receive updates from, from me about when the, the program's been updated with the newest scouting data, uh, and you can still sign up to, to receive those updates. And then there's the Chima ranking spreadsheet. This is a, a, a something new I've been creating for a couple months now, uh, and a lot of growers have indicated that they want this sent to them as soon as I get it finished. And what all it is is a spreadsheet. It shows how many, how many blocks were counted in each Chima, how many silids were found in each Chima, and the average number of silids per block for each team, just in a, a nice simple spreadsheet, and I have it ranked from lowest to highest. Uh, if you wanna be on the list to receive this, uh, this, this spreadsheet, just let me know, and, and I can put, it, put you on the list. Uh, if you don't wanna do that and go through all that, you can still get this off of the, uh, the Chima webpage, flchima.org. At the very bottom, there's a, uh, in blue text, there's a link that says Chima rankings by cycle, so it, it's available there. <coughs> so conclusions. Uh, uh, I think we are definitely gaining ground on silica populations. We've got a good handle on how to reduce silica populations via coordinated sprays, but we could be doing even better if the uh, inactive Chima started to, you know, a, a coordinated control approach, you know, of their own. Uh, we, we would be doing better off. And the key to getting that going, as we've seen in South Lake West Orange and Northwest Hardy, is going to be uh, the leadership. In each situation, it, it wasn't. It, the people who got that going, it was a grower or a production manager, people who, who were tied directly into uh, you know, the, the overall well-being of the area. Those are the kind of people that we need to step up and, 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 and get the Chima's active. So if, if, you, you know, if you're in a Chima that's not doing you know, a whole lot, there's a great opportunity to step up there and be a leader in this, in this, in this program and, and help improve the, the overall growing conditions in, in, in your area. <coughs> uh, I think we've seen that the coordinated sprays do work, and, and you know, silids and, and HLB have changed everything. Uh, prior to that, you know, we could go at it on a farm-based approach, you know, or, or, or an individual approach. But now, especially in, in terms of, of silids, uh, it, it needs to be a, a cooperative community effort. If we can all just get on the same page about when we're going to spray and what mode of action we're going to use, we'll be much better off. Uh, and, you know, there's a, a laundry list of things that we have to pay attention to now. Uh, and there's nutritionals and fertigation and root health. And, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, but at the top of that list is silica control. It's got to be one of the top priorities in your management program. Uh, and, and to just kind of sum it all up, the Chima program is a grower-led operation. So the Chimas that are out there, they're doing really well. They're led by the growers or the production managers who, who are, are, are in those areas. So, you know, if, if you... If you're in a situation like this where, where you have the opportunity to bring more people in, go out and talk to your neighbors. Tell them about the program. Show them the results that we're seeing. Uh, it will greatly benefit you and, and all the other growers in the area.